Here we are in IFR Connected, where I'll define the E1 devices. The first important thing to mention is that E1 machines communicate with IFR Connected using an E1 dedicated cloud service and a data mailbox connection. IFR Connected connects to the cloud service account using the E1 adapter, thus having access to the machine data using a normal internet connection. There are two methods of connecting E1 devices to IFR Connected the manual device configuration and the E1 import. Let's go on with the manual method first. I'll navigate to the site where I want to add my E1 device. In my Sites Details panel, I'll scroll down to the Devices tile and access it. I already have a bunch of devices here, but I'm gonna add my new E1. I'll select the E1 device type and give it a good name, like E1-1. I'm gonna skip the details that are not mandatory and go straight to the adapter section. Here I'll create a new adapter. I'll name it E1 Adapter, then proceed with the E1 Cloud Service account details, account name, user and password. The polling interval option is by default set to 60,000 milliseconds or 1 minute. I could adjust this value to match my E1's device polling interval, but in my case 1 minute is correct. I won't enable delete data after reading, since that will make any subsequent reads impossible. This option can be useful when you reach the cloud account limitations, but I suggest you enable this only if you're really sure about it. I'll enable the alarms so we can go over their details. For each E1 signal, there are two alarms, each one of them having two severity levels, warning and danger. This means that there would be four IFR connected events, high and low warning events, and the extremes high and low danger events. The prefix and suffix are added to the alarm name and can be customized for high and low alarms, but also for when the severity level of an alarm changes. The warning and danger priorities can be associated with IFR connected event priorities, so I'll do that now. Now I can save my new adapter and select it for my new device. Next, I need to provide the E1 machine name, but instead of writing it, I'll select Browse E1s. As IFR Connected is communicating with the cloud service using the adapter we've just defined, I'm able to see my E1 machine and select it. The last thing to worry about is the time zone. This has to match the time zone configured on the E1 device itself. If the Use UTC timestamp option is enabled on the E1 device, the default UTC value of this setting is fine. If any custom time zone is set on the E1 device itself, you should adjust this option here. Now I can save my new E1 device. I can finally get my E1 signals. In the device details, I'll open the signal panel and create a new one. Let's name it Signal1. I'll skip the details that are not mandatory and select the E1 tag. This is the actual E1 signal, which collects data in the cloud. I'll choose the Signal1 tag and save my new signal. Now if I open it, you can see I'm getting live values from my E1 machine, so I know for sure everything works fine. Ok, so this was the manual way to get E1 device values in IFR Connected. Now that we understand how everything works, let's do it the easy way. I'll delete my manually created device since I wouldn't need it anymore. In my Sites panel, or area, or organizational unit for that matter, there is the Import E1 configuration button in the top menu. In the corresponding panel, I can set the entity to which my new device would belong. As I've started this import process from my site, I already have it populated in the Site option. The same would happen if you would use the Import E1 device from an area or organizational unit panel. I'll select the E1 adapter we have created in the manual step since we already have it available. The same time zone option can be configured here just like when creating the device manually. I'll leave the default UTC option since this is how my E1 device is configured. I'll select the E1 device, which is available in the cloud service, then click the import button. When using this easy E1 import process, all the tags available on my E1 device will be imported as IFR connected signals without my manual intervention. 
Now I can see my new E1 device in the site's devices list with all its available tags as signals and live values. I guess this is the way I'll be adding my E1 devices to iFor Connected from now on. Now that I have my first E1 device inside iFor Connected, I'll surely want to create a visualization and use those live signals to monitor and control my device. So I'll jump to iFor Designer to do just that.